Today we are going to speak on the power of persistency. The power of persistency. Now, if you can recall on Sunday, I spoke on consistency. Amen? How to be consistent with your giving. Consistent with everything that we do. Now, these two things, consistency and persistency, they seem to be very close. As a matter of fact, they seem to be synonyms. Amen? So we need to understand what it means to be persistent. What it means to have the power of persistency. And for some reason, as I was preparing this scripture, it came to my mind that in most of the cases, a woman is the one that's got the gift of persistency. Amen. Okay, let me shock you with a little story. <laughs> Amen. You know that we need to rely on women for our nation. Because out of the nation is where it's going to come the next generation. So unless we have women who are persistent with the goals and objectives that they want to achieve, our nation is going to be in trouble and the future generation is going to be in even bigger trouble. So hence the importance that here at Alleluia Ministries, we have women of distinction. We have women of Proverbs 31. Yeah. Amen? Do we have any women of Proverbs 31? Yeah. Amen. I'm going to ask somebody what does Proverbs 31 say. <laughs> One of the women. <laughs> Amen? So we need to be in position, in such a position that we know that our women are so equipped that they will be able to persist no matter what comes their way. You know, we know the story about Esther. We know the story about Deborah. But today I want to speak to you about one particular woman whose prayer has changed the nation. Whose prayer today stands as a testimony of the persistence of a woman. Amongst everything, when everybody else was against her, she remained firm. Even the pastor couldn't understand what was going on. She still remained firm. She was persistent in what she was doing. Amen. Let us open our Bibles in the book of First Samuel. It's one of my favorite scriptures. First Samuel, chapter 1. Let's read from verse 8. Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Anna, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? So Anna arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli, the, pro the priest, was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Now listen to what he says in verse 11. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, trust she might have said, Lord of Alleluia Ministries, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me and not forget your maid servant, but will give your maid servant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Ellie, Ellie watched her mouth at her mouth. Now Anna spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Ellie thought she was drunk. So Ellie said to her, how long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Anna answered and said, no, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. 
I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drinks, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maid servant a wicked woman, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I've spoken until now. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Alleluia Ministries grant your petition which you have asked of him. And she said, Let your maid servant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. Then they rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. And returned and came to the house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Anna, his wife. And the Lord remembered her. So it came to pass in the process of the time that Anna conceived and bore a son. And called his name Samuel. Saying, because I've asked for him from the Lord. Now the man Elkanah and all his household went up to offer to the Lord the, the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Anna did not go up. For she said to her husband, Not until the child is weaned, then I will take him, that he may appear before the Lord and remain there forever. So Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him, only let the Lord establish his word. Then the woman stayed and nursed her son until she had weaned him. Now when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, with three bulls, one ephah of flour and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. Then they slaughtered the bull and brought the child to Eli. And she said, Oh, my Lord, I your soul live as your soul lives, my Lord. I am the woman who stood by you here, praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord granted me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore, I also have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worship the Lord there. This is a presentation of Alleluia Ministries International. Beloved brothers and sisters, here we understand the story of a woman who understood the power of persistence. Here we understand the story of a woman. She was the second wife to Elkanah. And the first wife had children. And Anna was barren. Anna was a woman who couldn't know what the future might hold for her. In those days, it was a great scandal for a woman not to give birth. I believe for some of you who watch the Nigerian movies, you can see how the mother-in-law comes in the house when a woman is not conceived. <laughs> Amen? When a woman cannot conceive, the problem does not become hers anymore. It becomes the mother-in-law, the family, and the society. She does not only have to face the husband at home. In our culture, after marriage, the mothers, they start counting the months. <laughs> and when you tell mom, but you are still planning, we don't have enough, they say, hey, don't come with these white stories here. <laughs> so this woman found herself in a situation that the whole nation turned against her. That's why God needs to bring a supernatural power that will change the nation. Like we say that in that woman, the nation's responsibility was upon her. For the next generation was going to depend on God coming through for her. Amen? I'm not sure whether there's somebody here that's going through the same pain that Anna went through. But the Bible says that a soul was grieved. The Bible says that she was inflicted with bitterness. 
It emphasizes the kind of pain that Anna was going through. I wish I could be in that position of trying to understand what Anna was going through. But tonight, I'm sure that God doesn't only want to concentrate on the barrenness of Anna. God wants to concentrate on the sorrow, on the pain, on the bitterness that we are going through. You might be having children, but you are not happy. You might be having children, but you weep like Anna every day on the floor. Tonight, God has asked me to come and speak to you. God has asked me to come and say, your persistency has paid out. You have been persistent in calling upon the name of the Lord. And it has paid out. You know, one of the things that I like about being persistent is that people that are persistent can always make it to the end. People that are persistent, they will never give up, irrespective of what everybody says around them. Yes, they are going to feel the pain. Yes, they are going to feel, Pastor, I cannot bear it anymore. But those people, they keep on keeping on. Because they know that they've got a vision where they are going to. You know, can you imagine that just before Anna's breakthrough came, should have given up and said, Lord, it's been too long. It's been too long. Lord, I've been paying my tithe. Lord, I've made that vow. Why are you not coming through for me? Lord, from January, I made a vow with you that I'm going to be a tither, but still I feel the barrenness. Let me explain to you something. You know that whenever a project is supposed to come to pass, it first comes as an idea. And that idea first is felt here. Amen? That idea is felt here until you give birth to that idea. But unfortunately, most of us, we leave that idea just here. We cannot execute the idea. And many, many, many good ideas today have been born still Many good ideas today are nowhere else but in the graveyard. Why? Because of lack of persistency. Lack of persistency. We can speak about business people. You might have failed the first time. You might have failed the second time. And you gave up. No. We are not people that do give up. We are people that serve the same Lord that Anna served. We are people that know that sooner or later, my God is going to come through for me. Anna knew that. Anna knew that. And we see here that the only person that supported her was her husband. The husband knew that my wife is going through bitterness. You know, the third thing is that Whenever you are going through a difficult situation, the person that you can count the most are the people that surround you. But most of the times, they are the very same ones that pull you even down. You go further and further down. How many husbands, how many wives today have destroyed their own marriages? How many people have destroyed and broken good relationships, partnerships, because of the power of the mouth? You know, I can, I can, I can picture the story of Anna. I can picture this woman, since the Bible says that she was praying for my heart. Her lips were moving. The priest couldn't understand what was happening. You know, it was a supernatural thing that was happening. It was happening in the spiritual realm. The, the priest could not understand. He got it all wrong. I'm sure Anna would have stood up, you know, and just defend herself before the priest. How can you call me a drunkard? Can't you see what am I going through? This and that. Anna could have had thousands of words to tell the priest. But look the way she answered. She said, no, my Lord. No, my Lord.
I've not touched any wine or drank any intoxicating thing. The unfortunate situation is that people always found a shortcut. And here you can see it's even from the time of the Bible. When people go through situation, their nearest refuge is alcohol. I'm speaking to somebody today. You are going through a problem and you found refuge in a bottle of alcohol. That bottle becomes your companion day and night. That bottle becomes your solution day and night. People feel pity for you. But you think that's the solution. No. That's the path to destruction. You are deepening yourself worse than what you were before. And the good news is that the solution today is that God has found favor. But now, in, in order for us to find favor, number one, we need to be specific. Anna's prayer was very specific. And for us to be able to be persistent, we need to know that we need to be specific. Now, most of us, we miss the point because we are not specific in what we ask God to do. We need to be specific with what we want God to do for us. When you say, Lord, I make, I make a vow unto you that if you give me a male child, Lord, if this project can succeed, Lord, if you can restore this relationship, you need to be specific with what you want. You know what? Unfortunately, if you are not specific, the devil will play with you. Because this is a battle that happens in the spiritual realm. Lord, anything goes. Guess what? The devil is going to give you anything. We need to be specific with God. And then we need to remember the vow that we made unto God. Number two is sacrifice. After being specific with your request unto God, you must be able to pay the price. You must be able to pay the price. Uh, last night we had an overnight at my house uh, with Pastor Alf and the rest of the family. And we are praying for specific purpose. And that was a sacrifice that we're making unto the Lord. Amen? One, after being specific, then you need to pay the price. Some people will ask me, Pastor, but why do people just go to church? Because they need a car, they need a house, they need this thing. I say, no, you got it wrong. It's not about a car. Because once you get a car, God knows that the minute you are blessed with a car, you are out of this church. No, it's not about a car. It's about your lifestyle. It's about your relationship with God. Because once you strike God for a car and God knows that your heart is ready for that, God is not only going to bless you with one, two, three cars. He's going to bless you with cars, even with trucks. Because it's not about a car. If you miss the word sacrifice, you are never going to make it. Most of the people, I remember we went to a wedding in Namibia, uh, Pastor Felix. And uh, the pastor said that if you are married, you need to make a plan every day. Don't just sit with your legs on top of your wife in the couch. It doesn't work. And the honey start massaging the feet and everything. Come end of the month, nothing in the fridge. Amen? You need to make a plan. Honey, next year we are going to be in such a beautiful castle. Even if you know that you won't make it. But make a plan, at least. Amen? Make a plan. <laughs> we have just finished our elections. You know, politicians, they know that they'll never deliver. But what do they do? They say it anyway. And you vote anyway. So make a plan. Make a plan. 
That's how you need to sacrifice your life. Don't just spend the whole time sitting down. Go ahead. You know, one day, um, the man came to the pastor and said, you know, I don't understand this wife of mine. I give her everything. The fridge is always full. Milly Mill is there. Everything. But she's still not happy. What can I do? And the pastor asked him, when you married your wife, was she small or was she already big? He said, no, she was already big, pastor. He said, yes, maybe that's the problem. Because she comes from a father's house where the fridge was also full. She ate all these things already. She doesn't want that. Now she wants love. Amen? So we need to come to the point whereby we know that we treat our women with care. We treat our women with love. At times we may not speak the same language with a woman. At times we may not understand when they come and say that, but my husband never takes me out. Amen? And you go, honey, but didn't we go out two weeks ago? And then she says, but you are counting now the times that we go out. <laughs> Amen? When a woman says that you never take me out, don't I? You just say, honey, let's go out. Let's go out. I failed in that school. You know, you go with a woman, she goes, she dresses and say, do I look nice? And when you say yes, she goes back and changes. <laughs> and you think, but did I say anything wrong? You know what? And, and I, I asked, but wasn't that nice? Say, no, you just said yes. You didn't even look. <laughs> and meanwhile, you were looking. But a woman can see. Amen? Amen? They judge something specific about a woman that we as men, we don't have. Amen? Amen? That's why they say that a woman needs to be an intercessor at home. Amen. You need to have a woman so that when the 40 years in the desert comes, while well, God is testing you, the woman does not leave you. Amen? Amen? the woman will be able to follow you. This is the kind of women that Anna was. Anna was a woman that was a laughing stock of the town. Anna was the kind of woman that even if she'll come to church, I presume she'll sit at the back because she didn't want to associate with other people because if you read the Bible, she say that my shame, Lord, if you can only find favor upon your servant. I know that you have been joking, but the truth is, we all need that breakthrough that Anna had. We all are going through our own situation. Don't look bad at me because you have got a child and I don't have one. Don't look bad at me because you have got a car. I don't have one. Don't look bad at me because you have got a house. I don't have one. You don't know what my God is doing in the spiritual realm. My Samuel is also coming. My Samuel is coming. My Samuel is coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just be persistent to get your Samuel. Our Samuel is coming. Don't give up. I want to encourage somebody that has been weeping and crying. Don't give up. Don't give up. Let, let me just read uh, verse 13. No, let's start from 12. And it says, And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord. Underline that the word continued. Continued praying before the Lord. That Eli watched her mouth now Anna spoke in her heart. Anna spoke in her heart. And listen to what he says. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. This was a woman that was really going through pain. She knew the power of continuity. She knew the power of persistence. 
She knew the power of not giving up. And I pray to God, be it in business, be it in ministry, be it in family, don't just give up the first time. Don't give up until you know that I've done my best. Don't give up. I always say that I prefer to be the last one to give up. Even if everybody else has given up, I'll still not give up. And that's the power of persistency. Many of us have given up on our dreams. Many of us are going through a self-pity party. Nobody's ready to listen. We all went through that. Speak to God. Speak to God. Bring unto the Lord your problems. And he's going to listen. And the Bible says that Anna was asking for a male child. She was specific and said, Lord, if I can find favor and you bless me with a male child, what are you trusting God for today? What are you asking God for today in your life? We spoke about being specific. We spoke about sacrifice. Pay the price. Be ready to pay the price. Unless you pay the price, you'll never be able to taste the good of the Lord. Amen. You know, one of the interesting things that I always, whenever I read the Bible that comes to my mind, uh, I understand the, the covenant that God had with Abraham. Where he says that I'm going to bless you and your world generation, and your children's children. There are going to be so many. You know what? Yes, Abraham's children's children are blessed, were blessed. But still they had to work. Eh? They received the promise, but still they had to work. It wasn't just a matter of, Lord, I made a vow, you promised I'm going to receive it, and you sit down. No, they still had to work. And it amazes me that many times you receive a word of knowledge from a pastor or from any man of God and you decide, well, that's it. My breakthrough has come. No. You still need to work towards that. There are three things that we always say that are important. Number one is, Sister Pamela, receive the word. Receive the word. Number two, believe in the word. And number three, act upon the word. If you don't understand these three basic principles, you are never going to see your breakthrough coming back. Never. Because many people are not prepared to pay the price. Many people are not prepared to pay the price. You know, there's a pastor that always says that it surprises me how many people want to tell him how to run a church. People that had never run a church. Honestly. After 20 years in ministry, you ought to know how to run a church. After 20 years in business, you ought to know how to run a business. After 20 years of marriage, you at least ought to know your husband. Amen? He cannot be a foreigner to you anymore. <laughs> you know, one day, um, let me just give some credit to the men as well. One day, this man comes to the wife with a little bit of blood on his shirt and everything. It was all dirty late at night. And he comes to the wife and says, you know, honey, uh, something very bad happened. You know, I had a fight with somebody and I killed him. So I went and I buried him right behind there. But please, let us keep this secret. <laughs> and the wife says, no, that's fine, my husband. We are going to keep that secret. The first fight, argument that they had...
the first argument, the woman ran to the police and said, you know what? My husband killed somebody and buried him behind the yard. I can go and show you. And the husband was at home and he sees the police coming. And they come and they say, sir, your wife came. Yes, you don't even need to ask him. I'm going to show you. Just tie him up. I'm going to show him. And then they went. They actually saw that actually something was buried there. And they started digging and digging and digging. And when they came, they found a goat. <laughs> buried in there. And the woman said, but wait, wait, wait. Is it a goat? And the husband said, no, no, no. I just wanted to test you. I wanted to test your faithfulness to our marriage. How far we can go. Amen. Amen. And, the, and the man said. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But this is not the case of the women of Hallelujah Ministries. Amen. <laughs> we are faithful. We remain faithful with our word. We are never going to compromise. Even if Pastor Felix does something. Mama Ada. <laughs> Yeah, whatever we are going through, God knows our pains. God knows our sorrow. I just want to encourage somebody here today that you might be here thinking that nobody understands. You might not even be laughing, you know, because you are going through a situation. I want to tell you that God understands what you are going through. And your breakthrough is about to come. Thank you for watching. We hope that the Lord has spoken to you.